Hey everyone, Reflected here, and today I'd like to show you how you can have a smooth experience in DCS 2.9, both in 2D and VR, with amazing visuals. My last couple of months have been a turmoil. I got a new laptop, an Asus F15 with an RTX 3070, and 32 gigabytes of RAM. Then DCS 2.9 came, and then I got a Quest 2 VR headset so many new variables. I struggled with stutters and bad performance and I had no idea where to look. I'm no PC guru, so I tried everything I found on the internet. I got a lot of help from the community, especially from Flappy, so big thanks to him. And now, it's pretty smooth, both in 2D and VR. I collected all the little tricks here and I'm gonna show you three different presets that should work for everyone. First of all, it can be your hardware. Originally, I had a shitty no-name SSD for DCS and I got massive stutters. Getting a high quality, fast one, got rid of them. Don't try to save money on SSD. Then the RAM, 32 gigs is a must, but it's also just barely enough. 64 would be much better. Next. Here are a couple of things that you can try outside of DCS that may make your game run better and smoother and get rid of stutters. Make sure DCS.exe is run as an administrator. Select maximum performance power plan. I have a laptop so I have it disabled and this Armory Crate app is taking care of it but as you see turbo mode is selected. Point is don't let your PC try to save energy. Then, you may want to disable the power service. It solved the stutters for some people. Make sure DCS is set as an exception in your antivirus. You can try turning off hardware accelerated GPU scheduling and see if performance improves. It did for me, but not for everyone. Add DCS to the app list in your graphic settings and make sure it's on high performance. And here's the biggest game changer for me, unpark your CPU cores. I have no clue what that means, but this is what got rid of stutters for me in 2.9. Someone posted a simple app that does it for you. I'll put a link in the video description. Okay, now to my Nvidia settings. Again, I'm no expert, but I watched dozens of tutorials, read many threads and experimented with the settings and this is what worked best for me. I'm not gonna read them out loud, just pause the video and copy them. Alright, let's open DCS. Before you go into the graphic settings, make sure you disable wake turbulence if you are planning to fly a mission with many planes. Basically any World War II mission. Is the Godzilla of all FPS eaters. Okay, so here are the settings I use in 2D and I'm getting at least 50 FPS at busy airfields and well over 100 in flight. And DCS looks breathtakingly beautiful. Again, I'm not gonna read them one by one, you can pause the video and copy. My laptop is not at the top of the food chain, so if I can run it like this, you probably can too. If not, if your rig struggles with these, the settings I would recommend changing are the anti-aliasing. First, lower MSAA to 2, it still looks good. But if that's still not enough, change it to DLAA, so Deep Learning Anti-Aliasing. It doesn't look as crisp as MSAA, but in exchange, it will boost your FPS a lot. If you're not flying low and slow, so helos, you can also change tearing shadows to flat you won't notice the difference. With flat tearing shadows and DLAA, you can probably keep your other settings maxed out and DCS will still look absolutely amazing. But what if you are in VR? I found out the hard way that I must have 36 plus FPS, so half my refresh rate, otherwise movement gets choppy and it ruins the experience. So, these are the settings that worked well for me. The idea is, VR doesn't look as crisp and sharp as a 2D screen and there are many settings where you can go lower and not notice the difference because of that. 
use upscaling instead of anti-aliasing and compensate its blurriness with sharpening. DLSS on quality works fine for me, but if I wanted even more FPS, I could set it to balanced or performance, but those look too blurry for my liking. Upscaling will cause a little bit of ghosting and some other artifacts, but I gladly choose those in exchange for such a massive FPS boost and smooth gameplay. Textures, shadows and water are medium, big performance boost, and in VR you can't really see the difference. I keep terrain textures on high, though. Lowering the clutter, grass, helped a lot too, and so did lowering the scenery and forest details factor. Both trees and buildings have a high detail version when they are close and a low detail one when they're far away. Lowering these sliders changes the distance where that change occurs. In VR, you can easily get away with 0.5 because objects that are far away are blurry anyways. Another important checkbox is full screen mode. I found that in VR, I'm getting better results with it unchecked, but your mileage may vary. It's worth testing. What about my other VR settings? In the Oculus app, I have my resolution bumped up a little bit. If I wanted to gain more FPS or sacrifice some for better graphics, this is the first thing that I would change. In the Oculus Tray tool, I leave super sampling alone, set ASW to 30, adaptive GPU scheduling to off, then lower your FOV multiplier as much as you can. It saves a lot of FPS. It prevents your PC from rendering stuff that is outside of your view. If you start seeing a black frame around your vision, you went too low. 0.8 works fine for me. In the link settings, Make sure distortion curvature is set to low. Encode resolution at 3664 works for me. Apparently that's the default resolution if I don't change anything here. Encode bitrate. This one is tricky. The default automatic value is about 150. Meta doesn't recommend setting it above 250, but some people swear by 300 or even 500. The higher the number, the clearer the image, but there's also a higher possibility of artifacts and you get lower frame time too. So for example, when you do a roll, the ground will move in a choppy way. So I just leave it at zero, so on automatic. I find that the picture clarity suffers a little bit, but it gives me the smoothest gameplay and that's what's most important to me. Last but not least, make sure you enable turbo mode in your OpenXR settings. Alright, let me know in the comments if there's anything I missed, anything else you would recommend. All in all, I'm really happy now. DCS looks amazing and performance is smooth, both in 2D and VR. Time to play some campaigns, huh? Alright, see ya!